Hello again, Steve here with a, another shout out to, to Jordan Peterson in what he's doing. This is not exclusively what this video is about, but I just wanted to um, just say you know, a thank you to Jordan Peterson for what he's doing for young men, in particular for young men. I say this because, well, for some of you, what I might be saying here is probably just old news, and, and you can, you're welcome to comment that, that I don't know much about <laughs> Jordan Peterson, and you would be right. I'm a fairly recent discoverer of, of his work, and I, I, I want to get down to reading some of his stuff fairly soon, his newest book and so on. And, but I wanted to make the point that um, it's so important to, to get that encouragement if we can't find that within ourselves. You know, it's not that girls don't need encouragement too, but there's been a lot of that lately, this whole girl power thing and stuff, and I think it's almost overblown. But guys, young guys in particular, have been left behind. And I want to share with you this particular video. I want to, I want to, I want to talk most about focus, and I'm sure that Jordan Peterson talks about this too, with the power of focus, and relate to you a little bit of my story, and also an example of my daughter in terms of what I encouraged her to do, and uh, I'm not going to take credit for it, but I, there's probably part of that in there of what I've encouraged her to do and how that's grown into a success in life. So I wanted to talk about where I've come from and what I decided to do. You know, I'm not, I'm not a young guy. I'm in my 50s, but so I got a bit of a late start on this. I, was, I wasn't really, I grew up in a very strict environment and had some encouragement and so on, but there was a lot of things left out because of all the taboos of religion and whatnot. And I just, I went in, out into life without many life skills, honestly. Like I was, I was inept in so many ways and especially I was socially inept, which is a huge, huge problem. And I, I work with, with a lot of people now in helping them to become more confident. It's one of the things they do. But back in the day, I wrote a book it was called Optimum Health. It still is called Optimum Health, actually, but it's out of print now. I was very proud of the book. I think it's a great book, and I've had some great reviews from, from way back. You won't really find much on the Internet because it was pre-Internet. This was done back in the uh, early, late 90s, basically, when there wasn't a whole lot of Internet around. But when I wrote this book, the, I was living in Vancouver at the time, and the number one talk show host within Vancouver was a guy named Rafe Mayer at the time, and his staff for some reason got wind of me writing this book and they were going to be doing a, a health related talk show one morning and I got a call could I be on the show on the panel on and you know I just finished this book and it would just it just gone into libraries and local bookstores and whatever and you know what I did I didn't even bother responding you know why because I couldn't conceivably see myself actually being able to perform in a public speech sort of way. I just, it was beyond me. It was like, you might as well have asked me, hey, Steve, would you want to go to hell? You know, like literally into Dante's hell. No, I don't want to. And therefore, I just ignored it. And where did this book go? It went nowhere. I mean, you can still find a few copies if you do a search for it in um, used bookstores in Oregon or someplace. I mean, there are a few out there, and I've got a few copies of it. And it's out of print now. But I had an opportunity to really put this forward, and I, I, just, I just didn't, I, I mean, I might have collapsed. I don't know what would have happened. So that was my start. But after that, I realized, oh, oh, I just missed a big opportunity. I don't have these skills. So I set out upon this quest to de become more confident and to begin to hone my focus into that. I began to do some early searches and I found this guy named Tom Antion, who you can find on the internet. And he was teaching people at the time how to develop, you know, public speaking skills and presentation skills and how to put your stuff out there in a way that was, came across as somewhat confident and coherent and so on. I, I bought his course. I studied some of his stuff. I bought his book. And that was a help. Although I wanted to have more one-on-one, -on -one, face to face experience with people because that was going to be empowering doing everything over the internet uh, was a little bit uh, one step removed from reality in a way so I did some searches when I moved to a different city on the prairie Saskatoon into what could possibly help me and I found this organization that was getting going it was called the Saskatoon Empowering You Group run by a lady named Marnie who we got along great at first and then we had a falling out and she threw me basically asked me to leave the group 
because uh, you know I was uh, I guess challenging her leadership or whatever as at least she maybe she felt that way but I she did leave me with one very empowering thing I remember this one presentation I was to do at the time just getting going I was extremely uncomfortable and I stood up to do my presentation and some people walked out of the room like literally they walked out of the room that was incredibly devastating internally for me but I went forward forward with it anyways and I kept on going but she introduced me as somebody who was one day going to be an amazing public speaker. And that always stuck with me because it's, it's these empowering moments that are left with us. And I, you know, I, I didn't have a lot of that growing up, that, that visionary empowerment. And one of the things I like about Jordan Peterson is he's, he's doing his best to help young people to be instilled with this encouragement, which they may not have had. And there's this deep yearning that people have for this, you know. And, and if we don't have it, sometimes we've got to create it in our own lives, right? One of the things I did after this, this experience with the, with the Empowering You group and having been, I being asked to leave, is I said, okay, I still want this, but I don't know where it is. And I looked around and I couldn't find it. So I said, you know what, I'm going to create my own. So I created this thing called Coffee Chat, which grew into... You know, we had a chapter here, we had a chapter in Southern Ontario, we had a chapter for a while in British Columbia, and it grew into something, it even grew into a speakers forum called the Saskatoon Speakers Forum, where we had, over the course of a number of years, we even had the mainstream media come out and interview us because we were becoming known. We had, heck, we probably had several thousand people involved as listeners and, and many multiple, multiple, uh, guest speakers and so on come through over the years. It's kind of died down now because it's, I guess it's, 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 done, its, it's done its thing. I still have some of the odd time just to get around and chat with people. But the idea was to develop this ability to speak confidently and present myself confidently and to help others present themselves confidently in social settings, right? It's so important. It's, a, it's something we, we don't get. And, and to also encourage people to strengthen themselves emotionally, emotionally and mentally. And physically, of course, too. To be more, as Jordan Peterson said, put together individuals, right? When I started this coffee chat on my own, I didn't have Marnie's help then. I realized, man, was I ever incompetent. So I actually has it had a physical breakdown. I was supposed to do this presentation. And normally there were just a few people, four or five. And then all of a sudden there was 12. And I physically froze. I mean, there is, there is something powerful about the emotions and the mental shutdown of the physicality. My, my vision went blurry and, and I couldn't read. I couldn't compose myself whatsoever. It was a complete disaster. As a result of this, I reached out again to somebody who put me in touch with the Toastmasters group and that has been instrumental. It has been core to me becoming much more confident because then I could, I, it was actually a pre-built format that I could just put myself on and yes, I don't necessarily agree that everything that's done in Toastmasters is the way you want to do it in the real world. But at least it was something to get on board with. It was like going to the gym and you know nothing whatsoever. And there's a trainer there that says, you know, maybe you should start with this and then train with this and then train with this. It might not be what you're eventually going to do, but at least it gets you going. And that's was, that was very powerful was the Toastmaster experience. And I think also, you know, guys like Jordan Peterson, they're allowing people to who don't maybe have that strength and how to actually, where to start. He's given them not only the encouragement, but the, but the tools of, to go with the encouragement, with things like his book and that 12, the 12 steps or whatever he has. Fabulous stuff and, you know, kudos to people who are doing that in this world because this world, this world, in order for us to grow as a civilization, we have to have leaders who are very confident in themselves, who have the humility and the ability and the, and, the, and, the, and the drive, like this yearning to help their, their fellow man and their, their younger, um, younger people in the world who are going to take on those leadership positions. It's so fantastic to see, and I, I can't say enough good words for people who are doing stuff like that. Now, as an, ex, as a, as an example of what I've done in terms of paying it, paying it on, so I've got, a, I've got a family too, and I've got some kids, and uh, both I think both of my kids have benefited from my journey in trying to improve myself and me learning what I'm learning, passing it on to them. And one of the things I learned was the power of identifying where there is raw talent and developing that into skill 
honing it and honing it and honing it. And if you can find a marketable skill, a, a talent, where other people might be interested in it, and you just focus on that, and if you can find the love in it, the love like that, um, what do they call that? Uh, um, uh, it's like when you find your, your thing in life and you fall in love with it. It's time, when you're doing it, it's like time almost disappears is what people find in music and in whatever it is. It becomes, you find the art in what you're doing. And it's this, this magic that takes place within it and it, you can just, you can take it to such great heights. Well, my daughter, for example, you can find her on the internet. I don't think she minds me saying this because she's a public entity on the internet. Carissian, K-A-R-I-S-E-A-N. I should know it, but I want to make sure I didn't misspell it. Just type that in, do, do a Google search on that and you'll find that she is an artist, uh, a very accomplished artist at a very young age and she provides a service in many different categories of art to help people with their art needs. And part of the, the genesis of that was when she was very, very young. She was scribbling on the walls. We lived in this old ramshackled house. And the encouragement was, hey girl, you go ahead and scribble all you want. You know, and the encouragement was on, just keep, keep going, keep going. Keep, we got her an easel and so on. We get her lots of paper and, you know, just keep going. And always this encouragement, you're doing really great. You're doing fantastic. Here's a place you can improve maybe. We were an artist. We helped her out with enrolling her in different art classes and what have you. And she was able to roll with this. So this is an example of encouragement and how it can go, but also the encouragement to focus, right? So we get too scattered we might not be able to really develop something that's powerful. And for me, so that's an example of her, but for me it was this focus on becoming more confident in a public setting to do public speeches. Culminating in what? Well, what Marnie had said was I was going to be this speaker on a stage one day. Just last night I was at an event and this guy came up to me. He's known me for quite a while and he said, Steve, he asked me, Steve, would you be interested in speaking at uh, I forget what the name of the organization. I think it's called the Canadian Association of Chartered Accountants or something that, you know, very specific anyway. And would you be interested in speaking at their national convention? There'd be four or five hundred people there. And I asked him, I said, well, wh wh that's an interesting question, but why would you ask me? I'm not a chartered accountant. What do I know about that? And he said, no, we have, they, they like to have several different speakers and they're looking for somebody to speak on the power of focus. Mm hmm. That's an interesting one, the power of focus. Well, maybe I would have some input on that. So I accepted the offer. And there's a couple of things in that though. There's, there was a satisfaction of, hey, you know what? I set out to be able to do this and I put a lot of effort into it. Heck, I slept in my, cars, my car during, I remember sleeping in a car one time during a snowstorm after coming back from an event that I had put a lot of effort into that very few people showed up to, but it was because I decided to do this and it was an exercise I was determined, determined to do over and over and over again. So um, I guess I want to talk about how, I guess I want to basically sum up here by saying, first of all, uh, the power of focus is extremely important. The power of encouragement to ourselves and to others is very important. And I also want to just acknowledge those along the way who have helped me in this. Even though I had a falling out with Marnie, I want to, I want to acknowledge her for, for stating that, hey, this is a guy who wants to do something with this. He's not just out here just for something to do for this evening. No, this guy is driven, man. And she made that point when she inter introduced me that night, way back then. I want to acknowledge uh, those at Toastmasters and that program in general in just that it's a format that people can get involved with, where they can get encouragement and so on. I want to acknowledge people like Jordan Peterson who are taking the hard, uh, hard knocks, literally the hard knocks, to be honest and to give encouragement to people who are left out of the equation of the encouragement cycle, which is mostly young men. You know, they've been kind of ignored, let's be honest. And I just wanted to tell a story about myself and my daughter as well in terms of what can happen with focus. You know, I set out turning down an interview on a major radio show, which today is not very significant maybe, but back then there wasn't much in the way of internet. There wasn't these podcasts and so on. This is what there was. Talk radio was the pinnacle. And I was offered to go on, on this show. And I didn't because I couldn't. Like I say, it was like being offered into Dante's Inferno. I might as well have been. And to now, 
being some, I'm not even asking the guy, this guy coming up to me, this member of the Canadian Charter, what do they call him, uh, Chartered Accountants Association or whatever, coming up to me and asking, hey, would you please speak at our convention, our national convention? Wow, that was amazing. It's an amazing road, folks. Uh, it's a long road. It can be a long road. It can be a lifelong road. But it's a, such a fulfilling road to take to to better ourselves, to be the best, our, best that we can be. As Jordan Peterson says, to put ourselves together, man, and do something fantastic with our lives. Steve, you're going great chatting. Talk again soon. Bye for now.